On this episode, we are gonna be shooting the stars. Like Ben Affleck and Oprah? <laughs> no, not those stars. There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. So we're not going down the Walk of Fame this week. Oh, shooting those stars on the sidewalk. I was getting excited. No. I thought we were going to shoot some stars. We are shooting astrophotography. Ooh. I love that word. Astro. That's as fun as saying as <laughs> Ben Affleck. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be shooting the stars tonight. We're up nice. here on our fourth week of camp. Yeah. We've been here all summer. Had a blast. Yep. Um, so the, the full moon just passed about yep. five days ago. So the moon's coming up at like four in the morning. So it is pitch black at Dark. 10 o'clock at night, especially where we're going to be. There is no pollution of light yep. anywhere to be found. So we're up at Mount Lassen and we're going to be shooting probably somewhere right around, you know, like eight or 9,000 feet yep. tonight. So beautiful we're, we're both going to be kind of out of our comfort zone. We're portrait and wedding photographers. Um, by yeah. trade, right? We're not necessarily landscape guys. We do like to shoot landscape. We're definitely yeah. not astrophotographers. No, there's some people out there that are phenomenal at doing that. So I've done it a few times. You've done it a few yep. times. It's really fun to do. It is. I once, love just once you get everything dialed in, and we'll give you some tips and tricks when we're out yeah. there that we've learned and talking to some of the people that are just phenomenal at this. Phen I can't talk today. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal at this, but. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. We've actually been working on, uh, we have someone who is very good at astro uh, photography. I think the best of the best, really. Exactly. Of teaching a class coming up sometime this summer. Yeah. So, you know, keep, keep your, your eyes, eyes open, eyes ears, open, open. ears I open. I don't know what it is, but we'll be announcing that hopefully at some point, yep. um, getting him involved. So it Yeah, it's going to be one of those you won't want to miss workshops. Exactly. Because it is addicting to get out there and play with stars. Yep. Yep. So we're gonna head on out here, take a quick little uh, walk. We're actually gonna take a quick little walk off the set and uh, go meet some kids at camp here. And then tonight, we're gonna actually shoot those stars and then we'll be back with you to kind of show you what we did. All right, so All we're right. ready to let's, take our photo walk. Let's head on out. What a beautiful night in one of my favorite locations. You know why? Because this is so close to my house. Yep. This is Mount Lassen National Park. It is just a beautiful place if you ever get the chance to visit. But we are gonna shoot stars tonight like we've been talking about. Astrophotography. Astrophotography. So we wanna just give you a few tips if you wanna get out and try it yourself. Like we're portrait guys, yep. but it's just fun to be out in nature and get some cool yeah, shots. Yeah, I mean, we so. shoot portraits all the time. I mean, kind of for a living, but we like to just kind of goof around and just yeah. see what we can and, capture. And just and enjoy just things. So one of the most beautiful places. Give, give us some tips. You okay. start. Here's the very first tip, because when I'm looking at you right now, I see a swarm of mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you bring <laughs> bug, bring bug spray. spray. That's not the real tip. And the long sleeves. Yes, and the long so sleeves. you don't have to do this. But here's the, here's the first tip, and this is something that is super important, Yeah. is always have fresh and extra batteries on you, because doing long exposures like we're going to talk about, eat your batteries like oh, gosh, crazy. Yeah. I mean, you just, you, sorry about the bug there. Uh, you, you'll be surprised at how fast you watch your battery meter go down. Yeah. That's that's the first big tip. So being your batteries, your tripod, that's, yeah. that's my first tip. And a bug spray. And bug spray. All right, so my next tip is, a lot of people always ask like, what should my white balance be? Yeah. So there's two schools of thought. So, and, well, I guess it's kind of the same thing, but if you're somebody that likes to kind of play with Kelvin, Anywhere from like 2,800 to 4,000 Kelvin, that's like a great place for shooting yeah. picture, shooting stars. Or if you set to your sunny white balance, sunny white balance, amazing at nighttime. Which so, is funny because you think sunny. Yeah, you're thinking it's nighttime. Why would right. I ever do that? But it balances the, the light out just perfectly yep. color wise. Yep. yep. And the other thing that, that I know, I, I kind of struggled the first <laughs> couple times that I was actually doing nighttime photography, figuring out like how long should the exposure be? Yeah. I always say start it at like 20 seconds, but really the ideal exposure is between 20 and 30. Yeah. I, I yeah. tend to settle on 30 um, and you put my ISO at 3200. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, see, that blew really me away well. the first time doing Astro stuff is yep. to realize that ISO really doesn't affect your picture no. that much. I mean, it doesn't put more noise into it when we're doing yep. star photography. So that's kind of where I, I settle is that, yeah. that 30 seconds, 3200 ISO. Um, yeah using yeah. the lowest f-stop. So okay. I've got a, a 2.8 lens on here yep, now. Yep, I'm gonna shoot yeah, wide open tonight. Wide open, yep. Okay, so one of the other things is uh, 
<laughs> Bring bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that, but you can't even think tonight because there are so many bugs. So it's so important that you bring bug spray. But no, here, here's the next tip for me is, you know, there's a lot of people that go out and you love just taking pictures of the stars. If you love that, wonderful. But I think it's very important that you look for objects to put into the image. You know, finding trees and you can paint them with your flashlight very quickly and kind of play with it. It's kind of fun. But, you know, tonight we're going to shoot the stars and we're going to get Mount Lassen. Yep right in there and if we're lucky last night we checked it out and it looked like the milky way was running yeah it looked like it ran right, right with it right with it it's we've been be we've been working at camp down the road and we think tonight we're going to be in the perfect set i think spot. so so i think let's uh let's let it get a little bit darker here and we'll uh we'll take some nighttime shots and yeah. we'll see what we end up coming up with but. yeah you know and out to the west the sun's setting so maybe we'll get some sunshine yep. sunset, sunset shots <laughs> yeah and uh so stay tuned and you're gonna get to see some amazing astrophotography that's right we're gonna have fun All right, so this has been a blast. This is kind of addicting being out here. You know, we we said earlier we like to shoot, uh, you know, portraits a lot of times, yep. and this is so different for us. We can't stop. We've been out here for a couple hours it's, now. It's a, it's a little adrenaline rush actually because we've got the Milky Way directly overhead yep. right now, and I mean it's just we're capturing these <laughs> incredible scenes. And Mark's been trying something with the light that we're actually using. Yeah, so you know, you'll hear people talk about light painting, and I've done a lot of light painting with flashlights before. This is the first time I've ever played with a large LED panel. We have the LEDGO battery powered uh, panel tonight. Yep, the handheld one. The handheld one. And oh my goodness, you turn it on one second, it lights the entire scene. You have it perfectly even, and uh, it looks fantastic. So right now on the screen, I'm gonna show you with the LED panel, and now without the LED yep. panel. It's not that one's better than an, yeah, the it's other. Just it's preference. just personal preference, but it's just fun to play around. It is, it is. So we're having a blast. We're gonna go back and shoot some more. I, I don't know if we'll be able to stop, but. Uh, yeah, it, it, you need to get out somewhere, find a mountain, find and a mountain take where some there's pictures. no light, because right now, other than this light, we are in the complete dark. In fact, one of the things that we, we are fumbling with is our controls on our camera. I've got most yeah. of muscle memory, I can figure out where they are, but when you're in complete darkness, like, where's my white balance? Exactly. But, I changed my battery in complete darkness, yeah, so I'm so, real proud of that tonight. But we're having a blast, so go out and find a mountain, shoot some stars. I'm going back to shooting. All right, so now it's time for fortunate questions, and remember last week where we found our fortunate question? We had in two the in the tree. tree. We still have one left in the pine tree. This is our last week at camp. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick cone. the last pine cone. And I'm going to open up the fortunate question. What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, it's, Ooh. it's an extra wide <laughs> It's question. a big one. They're bigger than the questions that come in. Oh, uh, Jack, oh, he would, you know, always have trouble stuffing the big one in the fortune cone. He would. So this one is from Brenda from Aptos. Ooh, Where's cool. Aptos? Not, that's down by... Santa Cruz? Santa Cruz area. Santa yeah. Cruz. Okay. So Brenda, your question says, I am a landscape photographer who is getting into portraits. Which lens should I get? That's kind of a loaded question. Yeah. So maybe she's talking about which focal length, maybe. Probably. Right? I, Probably. Yeah, you, I hear I, that a lot. I don't with... even know what she's shooting, so I can't say which lens she's exactly. getting. But I've got some ideas. Yeah. You probably have some ideas. Yeah. Um, you're going to hear all the time people saying 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, yeah. 50 millimeter. I personally don't like the 50 millimeter length. It's okay. I, I like it. You like I, it. I like I it. Do. And you know what I, I like it is if you're getting into portraits, it is like the cheapest way to get into portrait True. photography. It's a $250 you can buy a, lens. So. $100, you can buy a 1.8 50 millimeter lens if you're just dabbling in portraits yep. and get phenomenal stuff. Yeah, true. So. True. My, my favorite portrait lenses, though, I really I have a 35 millimeter, a um, Tamron 35 that I like a lot. Yep because it gives you kind of that cinematic width, right? You can do a lot with it. You do have to get closer. Yeah. Um, some people don't like that uncomfortableness of having to get that close, that to, close. but yeah. it doesn't distort the image or the facial yeah, features. Yeah, there's no rounding of things. But I, I think I know your answer. You know what, what? Say. before I jump to my, my answer that I'm gonna give today, up until about three months ago, my, and it's still, I, I think it's still up there, 70 to 200. Yep. You know, a lot of people talk about primes, 
I don't really see the advantage a lot of times of a prime lens, especially the type of photography. If you're doing, you know, senior portraits, you're doing, if you're doing commercial work. I understand you can make the argument of it has to be razor sharp and it might be a little sharper, but 80 to 200 or 70 to 200, I think is has been my favorite you go to lens. Compression. I do love the compression of 200 millimeter and, and most everything's open. like 105 to 160 is what I like to shoot in. But yeah. the answer you're looking I, for, yeah. my favorite portrait lens. Probably is, your favorite lens. My favorite lens. I try to use it for everything now. Is the Sigma 85 1.4 art lens. It is sharper than a Ginsu. It is the sharpest lens ever tested by the, what is it, the DMXO, DxO. whatever, DxO people. That thing is... I think you could cut sushi. It is. It is a razor this. blade. It's If if you can get it nailed, the, the focus, you can go in like 800% when the person fills the frame and count the eyelashes on yep. their eye. That's how sharp that lens is. It is It is a phenomenal lens. I shoot with a Nikon 85, which is, is again, super sharp. Not as sharp as a Sigma. But I love that focal length for portraits yeah. because it allows you to stand back just a little bit. You can get that compression. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. But the, here's the problem: Mark loves this lens so much that he never takes it off. That's right. And the problem is he tries to shoot everything wide angle with an 85. I just have to step Up back close further. with an 85. Yeah, step back. Could you please keep going back? Go back. Go yeah. back. No, I, I've just been addicted to that lens. I've had it for about three months it's now. It's not. It's not a. It's not an everyday lens. lens though, here's the other thing: she's a landscape photographer. 24 to 70, every landscape photographer probably has it in their bag. That is the go-to lens. You could make a living with a with a 24 to 70. So I, speaking of that, I, I just saw some kind of pre-reviews and some articles about a new Sigma 24 to 70. Yeah. That's going to be part of their art series. Same series as your 85, which I would love yep. to be able to yeah. check out. That thing, yep. I bet it's going to be It's crazy because, you know, just two years ago, we would have said, ah, eh, Sigma's kind of an entry-level level thing, but not anymore. These guys are the real deal. Their stuff is coming out. And we gave Brenda a lot of information. We did. So, Brenda, does that help you? <laughs> no, you need to go out and buy the Sigma 85. As long as you have a Sigma camera, a Canon, or a Nikon. Nikon. Yeah. We thought it was available in our review for the Sony. It's not. it's not available. I hear that they might be. There's a couple of the art lenses that are, but that one no, definitely not. not yet. Good question, Brenda. It is. And as always, do not hesitate to send in your questions. We'll be back in the studio next week where our intern Jack will be able to stuff those questions into a fortune cookie. That's right. All right, send them. You can make comments below and always send in your questions. So, final thoughts and okay. food for thought. My food for thought. I, I This is what's crazy is the fact that you can go out and shoot star photography. You would think as a portrait guy that there's nothing I'm going to learn new that's going to relate to portraits. But yet everything I do still does relate to portraits because I start having to push myself with higher ISOs, yeah. with just, again, learning my dials, changing batteries and things in complete darkness. So there's always something to learn. I, I think somebody, it, it's important to be a well-rounded photographer. You should, to be a great portrait photographer, you have everything. to be a at least a good landscape mm -hmm. photographer and understand the principles of it. So, so my final thought is we were having a lot of fun, Yeah. right? And it was the kind of thing where it's almost an adrenaline rush. Like you're, oh, that's incredible. I want to take one more. Yeah. The thing is to not take the same picture 30 times, which yeah. you kind of want to do because you're like, oh, it looks so good. Let me take another one. Well, it's still the same yeah. stars, right? And it was okay to fail. Remember, we turned around and went, well, let's shoot it this way. And we were like, ah, it's not very good. Yeah. Let's go back to. But my other final thought and food for thought is the fact of I would have loved to stay longer but those stupid mosquitoes oh, yeah. <laughs> were driving us Yeah, because I didn't prepare well enough. I didn't bring my coat. So bring your coat, bug spray, long sleeves, and all of that. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. So like always, we ask you to like and subscribe. We're going to finish this episode quickly before the logging trucks come, <laughs> come driving right, right by. So we'll actually talk a little bit louder right now, but we look forward to seeing you every Tuesday here on the Panoptic Chopstick Show. Thanks a lot for driving the truck right through the set, but that's okay. All right, everybody, take, take care. Take it easy. And remember, say sushi. I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. That's right, the Panoptic Chopstick channel, where we are bringing fun to photography. 
Hey, we want to invite you each week to join us on Tuesday, where we put out a new episode of our Panoptic Chopsticks show, where we will give you tips, tricks, interviews with photographers. We'll give you DIY projects to do on your own and maybe even inspire you a bit. That's right, including always a little dash of fun. So we want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe and like our channel, where you will get notified every Tuesday of brand new episodes. But welcome to the Panoptic Chopsticks channel. Come join the fun. Thank you.